All right, we might get going this morning. I've got quite a bit of content to, to get through of, so I want to make sure we've got uh, enough time to cover everything. So I just wanted to start off by thanking everyone for joining us this morning uh, for our webcast. I know there is some stiff competition with the Esri maps for Microsoft Office SharePoint and IBM Cognos webinar, which is also fine for your precious time this morning. But um, I will let you know that both webcasts are going to be recorded, so you don't have to feel like you're missing out by uh, attending this session instead of Esri's. So um, this morning, like I said, um, this webcast will be recorded, and you can find the recording along with today's slides on our new Eagle Television um, website, and that's just our new webinars page on the Eagle GIS website. And for anyone wanting to watch the Esri maps for Microsoft Office, SharePoint, and IBM Cognos webcast recording, which is also happening right now, that will be available on Esri's live training seminar page. So you can go check it out. It should be up in the next couple of days. So joining me for today's Q&A session is just Jason Thing. Sorry, Jason Thing Singh, and he uh, is Eagle's senior technical evangelist. Uh, everyone just calls him Jay. Um, he's not here right now, but he'll be joining us for the Q&A session, so you can hold all your tough questions for him at the end. And I'm Trish Mertz, a member of the Eagle Tech Solutions team here in the Wellington office, uh, along with Jay. So during the next 45 minutes or so, I'm going to introduce various data sets, tools, and communities that are, for the most part, freely available to you as an ArcGIS user. These resources include data sets such as New Zealand ArcGIS Online content, uh, tools such as the ANZIC metadata tool that we're working on at the moment, and communities such as the Esri New Zealand user group. Uh, I also believe Twitter is a pretty valuable source of information for us as geospatial professional, professionals, so I'm hoping to convert any doubters and to introduce some key Twitter accounts that are a great source of uh, information for us. So after I hit you with uh, my slide deck, I'm going to get into quite a quick demo uh, just to show you how to access some of these resources, and then we'll finish up with that Q&A session at the end. So I'll just ask that you take note of any questions and, and keep them for the end. Um, I have muted everyone, and this is just to keep background noise down, but uh, if anyone needs to unmute themselves, they can do so just by hitting star six on your phone. Um, and so at the end of the, the conference, you can unmute yourself for the Q&A session, or you can also just contribute your questions by text through the WebEx SMS. Uh, system, whatever you're most comfortable with. All right. So, as I mentioned, today um, some of the resources that I'll be introducing are accessed via ArcGIS Online. So, I thought I'd just take um, a bit of time just introducing um, ArcGIS Online and explaining what I mean by this in case everyone isn't familiar with it. So if you go to ArcGIS.com, you will find yourself at the home page for ArcGIS Online. Uh, many of you may have visited ArcGIS.com in the past, perhaps to put together a web map or to browse the extensive geospatial content collection there. And these are two of ArcGIS Online's main functionality, this ability to create intelligent web maps and also its extensive data storage capability um, that's available through its cloud hosting environment um, in Amazon. And for the purpose of today's webcast, you can really think of ArcGIS Online as a, a shop window for your GIS data. And this is what I mean by ArcGIS Online as a data repository. It's, um, it's really a place that allows you to find relevant GIS data such as uh, base maps and layer packages and even tools like geocoders. And it also allows you to connect to this content and to use it in your own desktop or online applications. 
Uh, and also, if you have content that you want to share amongst uh, a group of users or to share publicly, you can create groups and share content this way via, via groups of users on ArcGIS Online. Uh, and I'll also point out you don't need 10.1 to leverage the existing capabilities of ArcGIS Online. You can, you can go there now. Uh, you can connect to services and desktop and start accessing this rich content, um, even if you're not on pre-release. But um, when you do get on to 10.1, you'll, you'll find that you are able to um, share in a few more ways. Um, 10.1 allows you to share as a service directly from desktop, and this isn't really this isn't something I'm going to get into today. But um, just be aware that uh, you can share content to ArcGIS Online from desktop, and you can also pull content down from ArcGIS Online from desktop, as well as other applications as well. Now, I could probably go on about ArcGIS Online for the next 45 minutes, but perhaps this is uh, another webcast. Um, but I just really want you to think of ArcGIS Online today as this sort of shop window for GIS data. Great, so let's get into some of the content um, I've promised you today. I'm going to start off with Eagle's Community Base Map Service. So if you go to ArcGIS.com and you search New Zealand community or NZ community, um, you'll come across our Eagle community base map, which is a cached base map service built primarily using the LINS BRS data. The latest version, which was updated in August, was updated with some new road center line data and was given a bit of a facelift with some new cartography as well. Now, you can use this service uh, in desktop, and you can also use it as a base map in any of the ArcGIS.com viewers, or even uh, you can pull in the, the service and use it for any um, custom web developments that you're doing uh, in-house. For anyone who is unfamiliar with how to connect to these web services and how to, how you, how to use them in desktop and how to access things like REST endpoints, we've provided a step-by-step -step instructional manual, uh, which you'll find on the um, home page on ArcGIS.com. Um, and this just goes through step-by-step um, -step how desktop users can connect to the service and how developers can access the REST endpoint for this base map service. Uh, this service is, is hosted in the Eagle Cloud, and this is up in Auckland in the IBM data centers. Okay. The next base map that I wanted to introduce is the LINS topographic base map service. Um, and this is really a, a great way to connect quite easily to the topographic 50 series maps um, if you're looking to use them again in desktop or uh, online or any in any of your custom um, web developments. Uh, as with the community base map, there is a help document available, uh, and this service is also hosted in the Eagle Cloud. Uh, and I should mention that um, this service is um, cached down to one to twenty-five thousand, uh, and the community base map is down to twenty-five hundred. Uh, you're also probably aware that Esri um, publishes some quite beautiful uh, and quite interesting uh, base map services, which you can use the same way um, as ours, either in, in desktop or in online in the ArcGIS.com viewers. Um, and in the past year, there have been several updates um, to some New Zealand content, namely the Esri topographic base map as well as the Esri imagery base maps for New Zealand. So um, if you're using either of these base map services, you'll notice there's a lot more detail um, there for New Zealand than there was in the past. And next on the list for New Zealand updates are the Canvas base maps, uh, the National Geographic base map, and the Ocean base map. So for anyone unfamiliar with the Canvas base maps, these are quite 
uh, a bare bone um, base map, which really allow you to overlay your thematic content and really have it take center stage over over the base map. Um, perhaps um, in contrast to that is, is the, the National Geographic base map service. And this is quite a detailed reference base map um, that really showcases some of the quite beautiful cartography coming out of National Geographic. And then, of course, the ocean base map um, really highlights um, oceanography by um, showing the world's waterways. So all of these base map services will be getting updates for New Zealand uh, within the next year. Uh, next on my list of content that I uh, wanted to show you guys are some um, map services that we've produced using um, Stats New Zealand data sets. Uh, and one of these includes a, a mesh block um, map service, which has been joined to the population and income table. And you'll see the screenshot here on the bottom right. I've pulled this map service into ArcGIS Explorer Online and I've been able to use the rich attribute information attached to this map service to do a bit of exploratory analysis. So here I've created a query um, that finds uh, mesh blocks whose income is greater than 60,000, for example. So um, some good map services here that allow you to um, add contextual reference perhaps to, to your maps or to do a bit of exploratory analysis as well. Um, next is the New Zealand State Highway Shield um, layer package. So this is a bit different. This isn't, um, this isn't a service. This is um, a layer package which we've uploaded to ArcGIS.com and you can go to and then download um, and start using directly in ArcGIS for desktop. So uh, this one is a layer package, so it includes um, data as well as layers with, um, with symbology, which, um, like I said, you can download and um, start using in desktop. And with the State Highway Shield, you can um, simply save the symbology to your local symbols library and start using the shields to label your own authoritative road data sets. Okay, next up, this is, um, this is quite an interesting resource which Esri is working on um, in collaboration with, with NavTech. And this is something that um, is not available now. All of the other resources I've showed you are currently available, but this is one that's um, in the pipeline um, coming from Esri. And these are world routing services, which will provide varying levels of traffic analysis um, depending on the country. So you'll see in the bottom left there, I've got a screenshot of the, the data coverage um, for these services. Um, now, green indicates both um, live and historic um, drive time data that's available. And you'll see um, New Zealand down um, in the bottom right there were orange. And this means that um, the network services will be available with, um, with speed limit data. Um, however, I have been told that live and historical drive time data will be coming um, to New Zealand in the future as well. Now, Esri will also be providing various GP tools, such as uh, service area tools and vehicle routing problem tools that will allow you to perform this really advanced type of network analysis on, directly on these road um, network services. So you'll see in this screenshot on the bottom right, um, this is a drive time analysis. Um, that I performed uh, on a point down in uh, Wellington CBD, and that just shows um, two, three, and five minute drive time areas um, from that point in Wellington. Another great source of free 
um, data uh, is the LINS Data Service. And the LINS Data Service has recently been updated to provide Esri File Geodatabase download format, which is really great, as this allows for um, larger tables um, as well as longer column names as well, so you won't get any of those annoying, annoying cutoffs in your, in your column names. So this is really a great addition to the LINS LDS service. Um, and they've got quite a large collection. They've got over 40 data sets um, available on, on the LINS data service. All right, so moving on to some of the tools that are um, that are available for you. This one is um, coming out of Esri. It's their World Places Geocoding Services. And, and this is actually a service that's currently available but is getting a bit of a facelift. So um, currently you can um, connect to this geocoder in desktop. It's called the 931 World Places um, Geocoder. But like I said, this is um, really getting um, updated to include a more comprehensive address database that will provide point-based address geo-searching and geo-coding capabilities. So what I mean by geo-searching is the ability to find a place and have the map centered to that location. Um, and this type of request is, is going to be free. Yeah, so this is great. Um, so geo-searching is free. Um, however, if you want to actually run this through your geocoder um, and actually output XY coordinates, unfortunately, they're going to um, tie a, a fee to this. So geocoding through this um, World Places geocoder will, will be available through something called a subscription service. Um, and Subscription services are really, um, you're going to, it's going to be a fee and it's going to be, uh, you're going to pay on how much data you just, you need to process. Um, we, however, at Eagle have a free uh, geocoding service, which you um, can use. Um, however, this is a bit different. This is um, a place name geocoder. So this is not addresses, this is place names. So you can search for places like uh, Wellington or, or Mount Taranaki. And geo-searching and geocoding are both free um, using this service. And this was built using the LINS New Zealand Geographic place name data set. So any place names that are stored in that data set, you'll be able to, to search for and geocode using this um, this gazetteer service. Um, and if you search for New Zealand gazetteer on arcgs.com, you'll come across um, the home page for this service. Um, and again, we've also provided a help document which just explains um, a bit more about the gazetteer service and how to use it. Um, and like all our other um, services, like our base map services, this is also hosted um, in the Eagle Cloud as well. All right, moving on. This is this is something that we've been um, working on for for quite a while and is um, finally coming um, to fruition for us, which is great. This is um, an Anzac metadata editing tool, um, which will be compatible with ArcGIS for for Desktop 10. And this is something that we at Eagle are working with um, Ezria Australia um, on. Um, and this editor will allow for the import, editing, validation, and export of ANZLIC compliant metadata. Um, so this is this is really great, um, great stuff. It's going to be quite a powerful um, tool. Uh, now, for anyone who's unfamiliar with ANZLIC, um, perhaps like I was until I started on this project, um, the ANZLIC standard is composed of three sets of elements. So you've got the minimum core and comprehensive. Um, now the ANZLIC metadata tool, tool will implement the core elements, and there's about 40 of them, plus a few other popular comprehensive elements. 
um, the comprehensive element list is, I think it's about 40, 400, sorry, of them. So there's quite a, quite a few. Um, so this tool will, will implement those 40 core elements, um, like I said, plus a few of these really popular comprehensive elements. Um, a nice feature of this editor will be the ability for users to provide their own pick list for data entry. So um, this is really going to allow agencies and, and organizations to customize elements um, like addresses um, and contact details, for example. So we're currently in the testing phase, and we hope to have this tool available um, publicly by, by mid-year. And I've got a bit of a, a screenshot here for you. Um, so you can see it looks exactly like um, like it would if you were editing any other sort of metadata in, in desktop. Um, so it's just going to really allow you to choose ANSLIC metadata style uh, and start working with specific ANSLIC elements um, in the metadata editor. All right. The last tool I wanted to introduce today um, are called um, X-ray tools. So there's a couple of them. There's the X-ray for GDB and there is the X-ray for MXD. And um, both of these tools will be of particular use to anyone who might be considering um, adopting any of the Esri templates um, that are out there, such as the ArcGIS for local government templates. So the X-ray for GDB really allows you to um, develop and refine and document your geodatabase design, while the X-ray for ArcMap can be used, again, to document the properties of your map documents. Um, and this one will list out um, properties such as layers, definition queries, and scales um, that are set on the layers in your map document. And it'll, it'll write these out to a text file. So again, the power of both of these tools are really in their ability to summarize schemas and, and templates um, and things like that, and to perhaps compare your own data models and MXDs with others, such as um, those that Esri is, um, is, has provided and will um, continue to provide um, in the future. All right. Finally, I wanted to introduce uh, a few resources that are out there. Um, and this is, I've got um, this um, tabbed in, um, in my browser. Uh, this is the new um, resources um, center that's coming. Um, and it's available at resourcesbeta.arcgis.com. And Esri is um, really trying to address uh, the confusing, perhaps, um, nature of the resource center in that, um, you know, for some users, it's, it's difficult to know where to go for, for help and for blogs. And so all of that is really going to be provided in sort of a one-stop shop. So hopefully it's going to be um, nice and easy for us to find what we're looking for. And content is going to be organized into um, communities. Um, and these communities are things like communities for your industry, uh, and also technical areas of the software. So industry communities might be, for example, um, ArcGIS for local government or ArcGIS for water. Um, and then technical communities are, for example, um, imagery and 3D. So you'll be able to, for example, go to the 3D page and find um, help documents, videos, um, templates, and all of the resources that are out there for that specific um, area, um, whether that's a technical area or a community. Um, this is also a great um, place to go to see what's coming in 10.1 as well. Um, a couple regional meetings uh, that are happening over the next month or two. Uh, for anyone who isn't aware, regional meetings are an opportunity for um, GIS users in an area to get together and really showcase work um, that they've been doing um, to network uh, with other users 
Uh, and it's also an opportunity um, for Eagle to come and um, present on um, technology. So we've got a couple dates planned uh, for um, various places around the country. Um, and Eagle will be giving a bit of a 10-1 technical update um, at all of these meetings. Um, so again, I'll be providing these slides on our um, Eagle television site. So if you want to access any of these dates, um, you can download the slides and they'll all be there for you. Uh, the last thing that I wanted to introduce you to was a few um, Twitter contacts and some really good blogs. And I really do believe that Twitter is um, a great source of information for us as geospatial professionals. And it's, um, there's a lot of people out there um, broadcasting um, technology, and it's also a really good way to connect to different users and to people at Esri themselves um, over in the States and also to, to some of the guys here at Eagle. Um, so Eagle GIS um, um, has a Twitter feed um, that's just um, at Eagle GIS and this is a great way to find out about um, things like um, user group meetings, um, any initiatives um, coming out of Eagle um, and also things like the APAC user conference that's coming uh, in November. Um, Jay has a, a Twitter handle and it's Jiri Teach um, and he's quite active in the Twitter space so he's a really quite a good source of um, technical information and not only um, coming from Esri but he's, um, he's really a technical evangelist um, in lots of spaces especially mobile as well so he's a good person to follow on Twitter. Um, some good blogs as well. Um, Esri Blogs has consolidated all of their various blogs to one spot. Um, so now it's much easier to, to follow blogs coming out of uh, various folks over in the States. Um, again, the Mapping Center is quite a, a rich uh, resource um, in terms of um, cartography and desktop specific uh, information. And we've got a couple active bloggers here at Eagle. Trevor Hart is our resident GDB expert, um, and he's got a WordPress site, um, which is a pretty rich source of, of information. And Jay, as well, has um, a blog, uh, uh, geo.geek.nz, um, which focuses more on uh, Esri technology really across the stack. All right, so that um, takes us to the, our demo. And I just really wanted to give you a bit of a uh, tour of ArcGIS Online and show you some of the, um, the content that I've been talking about today. So um, this is ArcGIS Online, um, which is um, www.arcgis.com. And I'm going to log in um, using my my personal account. And I'm just going to show you a few different um, features that have recently been updated to ArcGIS.com. So if I go back to the home page, um, you may notice that the feature content down at the bottom has now been tailored for my region. So in my profile, I've put that um, I'm in New Zealand. So as soon as I log into my account, I'm getting a, a, a tailored sort of look and feel to my ArcGIS.com um, page. And I've got um, a couple groups that I've set up. Actually, I've got quite a few. And these are just for various uh, initiatives and uh, and other bits and pieces that I'm involved with. And I've set up a group, a, a group for some, some conservation work. And um, you'll see it's, it's empty right now, but I'm going to show you how I can push content from desktop up to this group um, and then share it um, through other users that are in my group. Um, and I'm not really going to spend a lot of time here, but 
um, I really do uh, um, suggest that uh, everyone signs up to ArcGIS.com and starts playing around with um, some of the mapping and, sh and sharing capability here, and it's only um, going to grow in the future. Uh, one thing I might do, actually, I'm going to search for New Zealand community, and I'll show you one of those base maps that I was talking about. Ah, okay, so because I'm in my group right now, it's only searching within the group. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my um, home tab, and I'm going to search there. So let's search for NZ community. Am I spelling that right? Community. There we go. Okay, and there we go. The first um, hit is that community base map. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the, the details page. And the details page is really just the, the landing page, kind of like the home page for an item. So here we can see uh, a description, you can see that um, help document that I talked about, and also some access and use constraints. So if I flick over to that help document, um, you can see it's um, quite extensive. And if I go down um, to here, this is really that those step-by-step -step instructions I was telling you about um, just to explain how to actually connect to this in desktop. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this um, URL, URL, sorry, and this is the connection details of the ArcGIS server that's publishing this service. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump over to, to desktop, and I'm going to connect to this server in desktop. So I can do this in one of two ways. I can um, go um, add data, or I can just jump over to my GIS servers, and I can choose to add a GIS server. So I'm going to use the services, and I'm going to copy and paste that URL of, the, of that ArcGIS server. Um, and this is public, so it doesn't need any authentication. So I'll just finish. Um, and you'll see that new connection um, is established right here. So as soon as you connect to our uh, Eagle server, you are automatically connected to all of the services that we provide. So this is that community base map um, that I talked about. Just zoom in here. And you can also see we've got the, the geo tips, and those are the Lynn's topographic maps um, that I spoke of earlier. So I can drag and drop that over top as well. Um, you can see you can see it in desktop. Just remove that. Um, so the Gazetteer, this is that uh, geocoding service that I talked about. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect to that, um, that Gazetteer. So I'm going to jump down to my GIS servers, and I'm going to choose that um, ArcGIS server that I just connected to, and that's in the LINS. So I'll just add that. And now I've got this LINS gazetteer as one of my geocoders that I can use. So I'm going to connect to that, and I'm going to browse for um, an area in Eastbourne um, called Robinson Bay. I'm going to hit enter. Um, you'll say something flashes and it's, it's found it. So I'm going to choose to zoom the map there, um, which isn't overly helpful. So I'm going to add a, a, a call out and zoom myself in here. So this is Robinson Bay, and this is um, an area that um, I'm doing some work in for my uh, Miro Conservation Group. So what I'm going to do, I've got some, some points here, and these represent um, various bait stations that we set up um, as part of our conservation work. Um, so what I want to do is I want to share these um, bait stations with other users in my Miro group on ArcGIS.com because they're going to go out um, and do some work, and they just need to know where these are located. So. Um, I'll just change the color. We always use um, 
red to to locate them. And I'm going to just give it a a brief description um, and just clean this up a bit. Compass date stations. Okay. In Eastbourne. There we go. Okay, and we'll just credit uh, Miro for that. Um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose to um, to share this. I'm going to create um, a layer package. Sorry. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, choose to share this to my ArcGIS Online account. So I'm going to enter um, my credentials here. Okay, and that will just sign me into that um, to that account. So now I can choose to share this with members of that specific group. Um, so that mural conservation group that I showed you earlier. Um, just fill out a, a layer description, and um, we'll put a few tags in here. So we'll call this um, bait stations and Miro. There you go. So when you search for content on ArcGIS.com, um, it's using those tags. So you want to make sure that you're providing some 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 decent tags so other people can access um, and find your your data. Okay. Um, I can also. This is a new feature at 10.1. So you, if you've got 10, you can't currently do this now. But um, at 10.1, you're going to be able to add additional files. Um, into your layer package, and this really just zips up um, things like um, Word documents, um, PDFs, for example, or text files, and it provides that along with the the data and the layer file. It also provides those additional files as well. Um, so I should be good to go. We'll just analyze it quickly and make sure that there are no errors. So looks like we're good to go. So now I can click Share, and what it's doing is it's packaging up. Um, the data. Um, it's creating a file geo, geo database um, as well as a layer package and it's zipping everything up and it's going to add that to my group on ArcGIS.com. So I'll just browse back to that um, mural conservation group that I've, I've got. Ah, and there you go, that was pretty quick. It's there and now other members of my group can now access that data and download it and start working with it directly um, in desktop. So quite an easy way um, to get your data out there and, and shared with other users. All right, so that's really um, all that um, I've got um, for content. I hope that um, this was of use for you guys. So um, we've got about 15 minutes or so for for questions, um, so you can um, unmute yourself if you want, um, or you can um, just pop in your questions over the SMS. And um, I've got Jay back in the room now as well. There we go. I just unmuted all you guys. Any questions? So what's the cost of putting that data for other people using it? Uh, so if you want to, that's quite a good question. If you want to upload things like, so the question was, what is the um, what is the cost for putting data up on RCS.com? Um, it really depends on the type of data that you are 
adding to ArcGIS.com. If you are using your free account, so that free account is, for example, like my personal account that I'd logged into during my demo, then any data sharing um, is free. So you can upload um, quite large data sets, actually. I uploaded the New Zealand Road center lines for the entire country um, through my personal account. Um, and that's all free. But if you want to start using um, things like organizational subscription, um, then that will come at a fee. And that will allow you to do things like uh, create services directly from desktop using 10.1. So you can um, create things like geoprocessing services, uh, feature services um, directly from desktop, and you don't need your own ArcGIS server in-house to do that. You're using um, Esri's um, organizational subscription um, connection to their ArcGIS server um, to put that data into their cloud. And then that will just, the costs on that depend on the, the processing power needed to pretty much to push out that data. Does that cover it pretty much, Dave? Yeah. <clears throat> Anyone else? Ah, uh, yes. Um, ben just asked if this webinar will be online. Um, yeah, so we'll be uploading the recording to the Eagle website. So if you go to um, our Eagle website and click on the webinar tab, we've um, we've created a new page called Eagle Television, and we'll upload the recording from today's um, webcast um, along with any future um, public webcasts that we do, they'll be added to that site as well. And the RTS for Home Use webcast that we did last Friday is already up there as well. All right. Well, um, if there aren't any uh, other questions, I'll just leave you with um, with our contact details. So if you do think of anything, um, do feel free to, to get in touch with us. So thanks again for joining us, guys. Um, I'll try and have this recording up by, um, by the end of the day, along with the slides as well. <laughs>